Uh, hello, everyone. So welcome to our webinar on, on Secure Lab Import Requests. My name is Melissa, and I'm a user support and training officer at the Secure Lab here at the University of Essex. And I will be conducting this webinar with my colleague, James. Uh, James, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is James Rayner. Um, I like, like Melissa, I work on the support and training team. Uh, at the UK Data Service based at the University of Essex. So uh, to start off, we would like to engage you with some questions on Mentimeter. So uh, the first question is which organization you're affiliated with? So we'd like to get a sense of the organizations that are represented here today. So uh, wait a few seconds for you to fill this one out before we proceed to the next one. Yeah, so we have someone from University of Reading, someone from University of Glasgow, uh, Anglia Raskin, Aston University of Edinburgh. Yeah. Okay, so someone had responded in our chat, Lancaster University, University of South Wales. So I'll go to the next question. So what is your research topic? So um, uh, our secure lab users usually have uh, diverse research interests and topics. So it would be really interesting to get to know what you're all working on. Uh, I'll just share the link again for those who've not accessed the quiz. Uh, yeah, I can see health economics, disability and education, deafblind children, urban economics, labor economics, real estate. So yeah, these are really diverse and interesting topics. And this is so far education. Yeah, I can see uh quite similar topics so because there's education there's education attainment or mental health okay so that's good to know i'll proceed to the next question so what uh data sets are you looking to import into secure lab so we'd like to know what you'd like to work with in our secure environment uh household survey LSYPE. Uh, I'm not sure what that stands for in full. <laughs> Call election data. I believe I've seen something uh, similar to this while conducting some input requests in the past. So I'll go to the next. Oh, MCS linked education administrative data sets. Uh, that's also a very uh, popular data set. I've seen it before. Uh, Millennium Cohort data set. Uh, so what software or tools would you like to use in Secure Lab? So we have uh, various tools and softwares that are available in the secure environment. So it would be, if you could tell us which one you'd like to use, uh, that would be great. Um, R, Stata. <laughs> it seems R and Stata are the most, or oh, SPSS. Yeah, so R and Stata are usually very popular, so it's good to know that there are people who are also using SPSS and someone would like to use MATLAB or oh, Latex. That's good. So thank you for engaging uh, us with that quiz. Um, I'll proceed with the presentation. So um, on to import requests. So the first thing that you need to have when you're requesting to import anything into Secure Lab is to know your project ID number. And you can find this by logging into your UKDS account. And then you click on the data button on the left-hand side of the screen. And when you click on this button, the project button will appear just below. And then select is when you select that, you'll be able to view a list of all your projects uh, and their titles will be hyperlinked. So you can 
be able to see more about the project. And then next to the project title, you will see a six digit number. So this tick, uh, six digit number is the project number that you're going to use when you are requesting to import anything into Secure Lab. You'll put that number in the import request form if your import requires a form. And you will also need to put this number in the Zen 2 notes section. So, so um, there are two main types of import requests. So we have those imports that require a form and those imports that do not require a form. So I'll speak on those that do not require and my colleague James will speak on those that don't require a form. So those that uh, do not require our documents, our packages, Python packages, data ADO files or packages and syntax files. So on to those that do not require an import request form. So uh, documents and syntax usually follow a similar procedure. So um, as I've mentioned before, these ones don't require an import request request form. So all you need to do is to send the file to us by our Zen to service and make sure that you've provided the six digit number as if you don't the six digit project number as if you if you don't provide this number, we won't be able to complete the process the process on time. And please ensure that um you've removed results, figures, statistics, and data from these um from these from these files and also ensure that no file paths associated with secure lab are are in the syntax files, especially if your syntax is from an older project, as this is something that has occurred in the past. So please make sure that there is no uh, file path in your syntax file. Yes, and for our packages, we have three main methods of installing our packages into the secure lab environment. And all of these methods have guides which are in the guide to working with our packages in the secure lab folder that's located in the reference drive. Um, so the first method is manual installation. So this one involves um, installing from the R packages folder, which is in the reference drive and all the instructions are in this file uh, called the secure lab working with R packages um manual installation <clears throat> guide sorry and um the next two methods involve um our ukda cran local r repository and the nexus repository manager so both of these files both of these methods um have their own guide user guide files so for the ukda cran it's called the ukda cran local r repository uh, file you can find the you can find the file in the in the reference drive and same to the Nexus repository um manager method you can find the file user guide in the in the reference drive so for Python packages um it's it's before you re you request for an an import of Python packages, it's important to make sure that it's it's available. So um, first of all, you check the Python package folder in the reference drive. And um, for us to import this Python packages, if, if you find that the Python package is not in the folder, you will send us an email uh, informing us informing us that you'd like to use a specific Python package and make sure that uh, it's important for you to make sure that this uh, package is available via the official Python repository as this will help us ensure that the package is free of malware and also to verify that the package does not contain any data as we as we usually import this, we usually import um, Python packages manually uh, because uh, CRAN, PYP, and Conda are not usually considered safe um, external resources, external sources. 
So um, uh, guidance on, on installing Python packages within Secure Lab are found in the reference drive. And yeah, so you just look at the user guide to and follow it to install the package in in your environment. And um, so if the package is not available in Secure Lab, when you're sending us the email, please specify the package that you would like to you would like to have installed and what to be used for and why the available packages that we have are not are not sufficient yes and for stata edu files um uh first of all if you want to import uh some stata edu files into the secure lab it's good practice to ensure that it's not uh, available there um as some users usually come and request before checking um, if the ADO file is available. And if it's not, just send us an email and provide the name of the file that you would like to import. And um, so on, on our end, we will download the file for you and um, install them into the, into, the, into the reference drive and we'll let you know when that is completed. And uh, please note that for Stata Edu files, we usually import from the official repository, which is the Boston College Department of Economic Statistical Software Components. And uh, I have the link uh, here. You'll be able to access it on the, when the slides are provided uh, after the event. And in the event that you would like to install unlisted packages, we usually do this, but um, it's it's a very it's it's only done in rare cases so you would you should send us in the event that you have to do this you should send us the source link so that we can verify its credibility and determine whether it's necessary for use within the secure lab yeah so um next we will uh my colleague james will speak on where an import request form is required um thank you Thank you, Melissa. Uh, so as Melissa said, um, the second half of this presentation will cover where an import request form it, uh, is required. Um, so essentially any type of external data set you want to add um, to your Secure Lab project. So to start with, we're going to show you how to actually find the import request form. Um, so you can actually be found on our website under the contact, um, under the contact page in the top right, um, underneath the login icon. And if you scroll down a bit further under get in touch, you'll see a link to the um, sort of hyperlink where you can download uh, the import request form. Try and quickly show you that now. So this is our, um, this is the UK Data Service website and underneath contact on the right here, uh, if you just click on that and scroll further down, um, section technical issues and secure lab import queries, uh, there's a specific page here uh, on secure lab import. Um, imports uh, if you click on this um the third bullet point there you actually have a link to the import request form so that's where you can find the import request form uh, on our website there so yeah so this slide just showed you there where that link and that link will take you directly to the form uh, on our website um so you may want to um so in this section we're just going to go through each section of the form and, and what you need to include and what it covers um so this first section, section one of the form, asks you to provide your Secure Lab user details. Uh, so the main point for this one is just ensuring that uh, your information is correct. So it's like your name, your e uh, your email address, um, and we need to make sure that your the email you provide matches the institution um, that you've submitted with your application. Um, just make sure that your um, all project titles included as well your six digit uh, project number that Melissa mentioned at the start as well uh, and just make sure that if you have multiple secure lab projects this is for the project that you actually want the import request to go to so section two um, is a bit slightly different so this is a section we've recently changed so if you've used the import request form in the past um, you might you might have seen slightly different data types here uh, but these are the new data types we have at the moment um, so you have to classify your external data set into one of these four types. Um, so the first one is open data, original data. So this is, you know, it could be an open data set that's, you know, entirely original that you've taken from an open source. So maybe 
Um, it's a data set you've taken from the ONS website and completely free to access. And you just want to add that into your Secure Lab project. So that would be an example of a you know original an open data original data import. Uh, this next section is sort of open data derived or bespoke. So uh, in this case, is these are data sets where you may have taken an open data set, um, but then you've sort of added to it, or maybe you've created some derived variables. You've added to it in some way, so therefore, you know, it's not strictly the same open data set, you know, as it would be classified under the first uh, bullet point there. Um, it also includes uh, data sets, maybe, uh, for example, from the NOMIS website, where you actually have to um, um, specify certain variables if you're creating a sort of bespoke version of maybe a larger open data set. If you're um, specifying certain variables in that data set to get your download, that would be, you know, a bespoke open data import. So that would be classified under this uh, data type as well. Uh, the third one is non-open data, original data import. So this is data. Uh, completely in its original form uh, and you've obtained it from non-open sources so it could be um, a data set you've 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 had from a, a third party for example uh, where there's a certain license uh, to gain access to that data set um, so basically any non-open data and and this last point here is non-open data whether it's derived or bespoke so um, this could be data that you've created yourself or you've created with colleagues um, and it's and it's not under that open license again. So those are the four sort of new types. Um, once you start, you know, submitting a broad request and you understand the different types, it gets uh, a bit more simpler and makes it more efficient for us to process the request. So that's why we've sort of updated the data types to how they are now. Um, so as well as classifying your data into one of those four types, um, in section two, you also need to give some information about uh, the data set. So this is really important. So just we need to know uh, the title of the data set and where the data actually has come from and who the data owner is uh, who, who created the data set. Um, you also need to describe what the data set is, you know, describe what's included in the data set, um, basically hand and, and, you know, what its purpose is. You also need to find a variable list. So that's, you know, each variable um, in the data set, we need to know what the, the data set contains essentially. Um, so you can usually provide this in a separate, you know, Word document or a separate file along with the import request form. Um, and you need to submit both the form and this variable list uh, using the Zen2 service. Um, and you can also list the variable um, if, if it's quite a small data set, um, there might be a, a small handful of variables, you can list them on the form um, if, if they do fit on there. But if not, then, as I said, please do submit a new file for the variable list. Um, now, there's a section um, in section two. There's a there's a little bit on open data. So if, if you've classified your data in one of those first two types, um, so either the original open data or the open data bespoke, um, you need to provide the URL from which you obtain that data set, and just double check that the link actually works. And once you've pasted it into that form, can we actually you know check click on the link and go to where we where you've specified the data has come from? You also need to provide um, a brief summary of the license condition. So usually with open data sets, um, it's, it's shared under an open government license or crown copyright license. So it's, it's sort of free to, to use and share. And you just need to uh, provide a link uh, to that license as well, just so we can double check that applies to your data set. Uh, so moving on to section three of the form. So uh, this section asks how you're going to use the imported data set within your Secure Lab project. Um, so here you'll be asked to provide some information about how this data set fits within the scope of your research project, as you've outlined on your research, um, original research proposal, and briefly describe, you know, how you're going to use a data set within Secure Lab, in what way will it help your research, you know. Um, so it's important here to include as much information as possible, because then we use this information to assess whether the request needs to be referred to um, the control data owners for approval or not. So this 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 section is really really important. Uh, and also in this section, um, we asked to outline any linking you're doing. So if you're going to link that data set to one of your control data sets within your Secure Lab project, you need to outline um, that method here. So outline how you're going to link it. You know what variables um, are included and how you're going to link those variables together. And also provide some justification for your linking. So why 
um, is this linking important and, and how will it age your research and your project? Uh, section 3.2 is again as a continuation of this, but uh, this is sort of a new section we added, um, you know, as as some sort of more projects are moving over to be accredited under uh, the Digital Economy Act. So this is a new section that we found is actually quite useful in, in covering all projects, really. So you'll find this is section asks whether this external data set was was it specified on your original project proposal so when you set up your secure lab project there's a section in in that proposal that asks will you be bringing in any external data sets into your secure lab project and this question just asks whether you you know specified this data set under that section or not you know and um if you have you know, it's completely fine you just tick yes but if you select no um you just need to complete some more questions underneath specifying um you know why are you requesting the data set at this moment in time you know why uh didn't you specify at the start of your research proposal and we understand that research projects you know develop over time you might not know that you wanted to import that project at the time you set up your you uh, initially started your secure lab project but um we understand that can be the case in, in most of the time so that's completely fine it's just um we need to collect this information so when we do refer the request to the control data owner they can just sort of see and see that justification there and there's also a little section on this little box on this section that just asks you to list all the control data sets uh, that are in use on your secure lab project so any end user license or special license data you'd actually don't need to include on on this section here it's just the control data sets and then section four of the import request form uh, sort of clarifies the copyright and licensing information of your external data set now it's important that this section is completed properly because this is sort of the section of the form that we go back to most of the time and asking for additional amendments uh the most common reasons being is that the section is not you know filled in completely uh completed properly and it's missing a few details and uh, further documents such as the you know contract or whether it's a third party data set or a non-open data set where there's a certain license involved if that license or contract or that permission hasn't been um, sent to us then we have to go back and ask you to sort of get that get that information so that is often causes delays to your import request form so if there's um, any part when you're filling the form and you're unsure about you know what information you need to provide and um, then you can get in touch with us um, either through our help form or uh, by emailing the support team directly at support at ukdataservice.ac.uk so then we can sort of work with you and and, and just clarify what information you need to provide uh, for the form so uh, similar to section two here section four asks you to classify uh, your permissions of the data set it's really establishing who the owner is who the copyright holder is of that data set now it's quite wordy these definitions but essentially they're sort of three different types so the first is whether you're the sole owner of the copyright so this is usually if it's a data set you've you know created yourself um and no one else owns it so you don't jointly own it with anyone else this is where you've you're the sole owner of that data set the second is being if you're the joint owner copyright so this could be whether um you might have collaborated with other users to create the data set so you share it with someone else this also includes data sets where you've taken it from an open source or maybe a third party source and you've added to it in some way so therefore once you've added to it you are sort of joint owner of that copyright of that particular data set there um so it includes those sorts of data sets so that's the open data derived or maybe the uh, non-open data derived or bespoke um, so those sort of data sets will sort of fall under this second category here and finally uh, the third is if you are you know, not the, not the owner of the copyright so uh, that could be whether you've taken a data set from an open source and you haven't changed it at all uh, that could be uh, open data original data import or it could be a, a data set that you've been given particular access or permission to to use or a certain license maybe a third party a non-open data set that you've been given permission to use um, that's an, another example of a, of a data, data set where you're not the, the owner of the copyright so there's sort of three different uh, categories, if you like, of the sort of copywriting or licensing that the data set uh, can take. 
so if you are if you've ticked in that first box so w whether it's a data set you've you've created yourself and you don't own you are the sole owner of the copyright then you don't need to provide this um information because obviously you are the copyright owner and you've given your information under section one so section 4.1 um asks you to give the information of those other copyright owners so um you need to give the uh information the details of the the uh, data owners from all the other sources so if you use, if you've used multiple sources to create the data set or you've taken it from maybe just one other source we need to give the you need to give the details of you know those copyright holders so that's just the name of the data owner uh, the position or you know if they're a staff member uh, what institution or organization they're from and their email their email address there as well uh, this also includes derived open data. So if you are joint, if you selected that second option of being a joint copyright holder and you've derived some open data, um, you don't need to provide any additional evidence here, but you just need to ensure that you've included all the details under that section two uh, section uh, for open or derived open data, uh, which is to make sure all the links work and you have, uh, if you've given the links to the uh, licensing terms. So whether that's, you know, usually open government license um, just make sure that the licensing terms and conditions apply to your data set there um, so for other types of data sets um, or other types of uh, data imports uh, where you've been given permission and you've, you're authorized to use that data set so this is usually where you've taken a data set um, from a, maybe a, another organization or maybe uh, a researcher at, at another institution and they've given you explicit permission to use that data set um we usually accept this permission that could you usually be in a, a an email so it's just um i give permission for this user and all uh, members of this project to use this data set within secure lab for example or it could be it might be a formal contract if it's uh, maybe a, a business or something they might have a more formal contract usually uh, permissions we see is just normally in a, an email you can just send that copy to us as long as we have that written permission and then we can say well this you have permission to use that external data set within secure lab now finally this uh this section of the form these reflect the different data types you would have selected in section two so um this is just making sure that you you understand what pieces of information you need to provide for each um data type that you've selected um, so it's to basically to make sure that the um, section you select here matches with the data type you've selected under section two uh, so for open data original data so you're confirming that the data in its original form and it's uh, obtained directly from the open licenses so for that open data derived or bespoke um, so you confirm that is a derived or bespoke open data set and you've given the sources uh, available under open licenses and you've also given that variable list as well uh, use, uh, via Zen2. And then for the non-open data types, whether that's original data uh, or the non-open bespoke, um, that you've given that necessary e email evidence, so that's usually uh, email permission or, or a contract, uh, that permission that you can use that external data set within Secure Lab. So it's just making sure that we have all the necessary information before you proceed and send us your request. And if there's any point, especially on this section, if there's anything you, that's not clear or you want further guidance on, or you know, you're not sure what you need to provide, um, just get in touch with us and then we can sort of advise you on that as well. Finally, the last section of the form is asking you to just sign it and um, make sure you sign the data correctly um, so you can either sign it electronically you can sign it sign it, sign it by hand and scan it back in um, and then you can send the form to us uh, it's important here that you do not send your data set um, at the same time you send the, the import request form to us so once you send us your form then we review it and we make sure that all the permissions are correct and if there's anything we need to go back to you about uh, then we just get in touch with you and go back to you um, but once we've completed our checks on the form and we ensure that all permissions are in place um, then we'll ask you um, over email to send us the data set using Zen2 um, but you'll get a an email notification on that um, once it's you know once we feel it's safe to do so but we have to complete the checks on the import request form first uh, so that's just a reminder so please don't send your data set at the same time you complete your form uh, send your form first and then we'll let you know when you can send the data set to us.
just want to highlight these um, pages here. So you'll get a copy of the slides um, later on today. And um, these resources here are sort of good um, places to go if you want any further help or guidance. So we have our help pages on the UK Data Service website. So if there's any uh, process um, you're unsure about, you'll find information on that on the help page. We have our Secure Lab uh, FAQs, which cover, you know, common questions that are asked about Secure Lab. So those are covered under the FAQ section. Uh, we have the uh, UK Data Service Secure Lab user guide. Um, so there'll be information about imports in there, but also about uh, Secure Lab projects uh, in general as well as we have a guide on submitting import request forms and data. So this will tell you how to use a Zen2 service to send us your import request form, but also your data set and also any other um, files like your syntax files or document files that you want to import. And we do have a guide. So this is the Zen2 guide there. Um, we also wanted to highlight our Secure Lab drop-in sessions. So one day a month, we do run um, some sessions uh, over one over a one hour period on a particular day. So these are just four 15 minute sessions. Uh, it will just be two colleagues from the support team uh, on a Zoom meeting. And you can just book the session in advance and it gives you a 15 minute slot to just jump in and, and talk about any queries you may have about using Secure Lab or if there's any you know process you want us to talk through. Um, you know, because some, some queries and instances are a lot better um, if we can talk through them um, you know, face to face rather than just over email. So, uh, I think all of these sessions are still available. So, if you follow these links, you can go ahead and book the session that you'd like um, that you'd like to attend. Um, and if you put once you do book the session, if you just put a little note about what you want to talk about um, in advance, that gives us a sort of a heads up, and we know what the session will be about. Um, but yeah, so I just put this on here just in case you want to um, book any of these. Um, you'll get, once you select the link, um, you need to enter the password secure lab to proceed onto the particular um, Eventbrite booking page. So they're all booked through uh, Eventbrite. Um, but if all these slots are taken, um, just email us at support at ukdataservice.ac.uk and we can create uh, more time slots if needed. Okay, thank you uh, very much for attending today.